First question is from Sarah Beek. Is there a difference between having muscle and being strong? Oh, big difference. Yeah, you know what's you know what? I mean they're 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 connected, right? There's crossover yeah. there. So bigger muscles contract harder. So theoretically having bigger muscles will make you stronger. However, a huge component of strength is skill mm. and the way your muscles uh, work together. So in other words, if you practice squatting and really get the form and the technique down, you can squat more weight without necessarily building bigger muscles. On the other side, you can train in a way to where you're really just focusing on the muscle and the contraction and the feel, not squat more weight, but get bigger leg muscles. Yeah. You see bodybuilders do this all the time. But they are connected. You know, Power lifters have understood now for a while that, although their goal is to lift as much weight as possible, if their muscles get bigger, that potential is much uh, higher. So it's not like they're avoiding you know, hypertrophy for, you know, just for strength. And of course, bodybuilders also, they know that adding weight, of course, to a certain extent, but adding weight naturally increases the tension on a muscle and is a better signal oftentimes for bigger muscles. Yeah, strength's uh, specific to the stimulus applied. And uh, so that's what, like some of the videos that I remember it was kind of fun to watch because I used to think that just a big jacked guy was had to be like the strongest yeah. guy in the gym. And then you'd see just this kind of uh, hardworking guy that was like a little bit, you know, had a gut and was uh, just, you know, looked like, you know, had had big forearms or whatever, but was really understated. Would just outlift the guy all day long for specific lifts, and and so uh, you see videos of of bodybuilder versus power lifter versus crossfitter mm -hmm. versus, and it's like you can see what their strengths are, you know, relative to what they practice the most. Great, and, and great so point. That's sort of like how I started to look. Yeah, at it. here's a good example: um, champion power lifter versus a champion Olympic lifter, both. Incredible strength athletes. Who's stronger? Depends on what we're asking them to do. Exactly. If I'm saying let's do a snatch, the Olympic lifter is going to crush the power lifter. If I'm saying do a deadlift, yeah. then or a bench press, then the power lifter is probably going to win. So there's a huge strength component, and there's also how you fire the muscles. Like here, you know, and this is a fact. You take the average person and you give them caffeine, and they will be a few percent stronger. What's what happened right in that moment? Did their muscles grow? No, their central nervous system is firing a little harder. They're stimulated and they're able to fire more juice to the muscle to lift more weight, but their muscles actually weren't any bigger in that particular moment. So, but uh, what does this mean for the person watching right now? What should I train for? Well, if your goal is to look good and, and be healthy for a long period of time, both. They both have lots of value. Well, they both contribute both to each other yeah. too. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's nearly impossible to build strength and not build some muscle, right? Right, And it's nearly impossible to build muscle and not build any strength. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some outliers where you see some extreme examples of it, but you're going to get a little bit of both. And extreme examples would be comparing the, the you know, bodybuilder who just won Mr. Olympia compared to the guy who just won World's Strongest Man. And they probably look nothing like each other, mm -hmm. you know, but both have a lot of muscle mass on them for sure because you're not going to be the world's strongest guy in the world and not have a bunch of muscle, yeah. you know? Yeah. I've always been really impressed with people that don't look like they should be as strong as they are. Yeah. It's always too. really impressive to me. We just My, talked about this. Mike Salemi's yeah, like Yeah, we that. just talked about this. We mm -hmm. talked about Mike Salemi, and then who was the other example that we gave? I forgot who. We gave two examples of friends of ours. I don't ours remember, but he's a great example. Who you just would never guess. Oh, uh, what's his name? Um, Jordan Syatt. There you go. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Jordan Jordan Syatt is that way, too. You just, you look at him, and you'd never, and that's not, I don't mean that to be an insult at all. No, he's fit and everything. Yeah, he's a fit uh, guy. But he, he doesn't just, look like he well, can deadlift 600 he, pounds. He, yeah, he deadlifts way more than I deadlift. I look like I should be able to deadlift mm -hmm. more than him. So I think that's just impressive when you see somebody like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. And it always stands out in the gym. I've, I've, I haven't seen it very often, but there's been a couple times where I see a dude load a bar and I think to myself, he's going to hurt himself. And then mm -hmm. I see them lift it and I'm always like, how did that guy bench five plates? He looks yeah. like he weighs 170 pounds. Or I've seen a guy deadlift uh, – almost seven plates, and I swear to God he weighed like 160 pounds or something like that, which was just insane. There was this guy on, it was Stan Lee's, I think it was like Superhumans, and so he was able to find sort of like really unique people out there that had like gifts in certain directions, right? And so there's a guy there that just looked like an average average guy, and he was able to, I was like deadlift almost like 900 something pounds, and like he, 
he actually like had this one feat of strength where he was uh, holding on to uh, a rope and um, I think it was like one of those ninja bikes was like, you know, full throttle, like trying to pull. And so they estimated the amount of force, you know, it took to be able to hold the bike in place. And it was just insane, like a uh, feat of strength. Yeah. So, so how do you train for strength? Typically, of course, lower reps, compound lifts, longer rest periods really focusing on the technique of the lift, really focusing on the skill uh, and of moving the weight in a stable, controlled manner. Uh, how do you focus on building bigger muscles? Focus on the muscle, the contraction, the feel, the squeeze. Reps are a little bit higher. But again, they both there's so much crossover um, that you want to do both, even if you're in a sport that only focuses on one, right? Yeah. Even if you're just a bodybuilder, you'll benefit from some strength training. And if you're just a strength athlete, you'll benefit from some of that well, bodybuilding. I think that's the biggest takeaway from this conversation is you get people that identify with one or the other, and then they don't venture into the other yep. modality of training, right? So if you're somebody who all you care about is strength, uh, you're missing out if you don't train like a bodybuilder sometimes. Mm -hmm. And if you're a bodybuilder and you never train like a strength athlete, you're missing out. And I think that's most common what I see. Yep. I mean, and we're all guilty of that, right? Like either I identify as more of this type of a, you know, lifter, athlete, whatever you want to call it. Therefore, I don't do X, Y, Z lift and I don't care about this because I'm not that. But the truth is they both contribute to both sides. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.